us from from all the way from Germany. No, I'll be thinking something like, "Hey, this guy isn't going to come here," you know, and and not know play. how to play. Yeah, the yeah, game. exactly. Yeah, I think I think he can play. So, if you guys at home uh, just tuning in, uh, we're at the One Pocket Tournament at Plan B in Amsterdam. And uh, maybe you can hear some music in the background. And that's not something from a CD or the radio. It's live music, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. Live music. Yep. It's Rob Takema in Dutch. And uh, Tim, I I'm, I'm I'm, don't know his last name. So. But uh, they're playing live here, and uh, it's really nice. Yeah, the, the vibe is really good over here, and it's uh, it's really you know a nice atmosphere. And of course, the venue is uh, is great. Yeah, we can we can if you want, we can give you a sneak peek right now. Yeah, with the with the second cam, maybe you can handle the second cam, Melvin. Yeah, and that's Rolf there. <laughs> He's a little bit camera shy, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> so there you have it. <clears throat> so, but you know, uh, an obvious thing to do when you're when you don't know exactly what to do in some situations is to to play a ball uh, up the table. Yeah, or yeah, like the, uh, Thomas just uh, did. He played the, his opponent's ball to make sure that his opponent can't run. Um, so it's some some. Sometimes it's better to give a ball to your opponent than to let his ball, or you have to have really good safety. Or you stick it to another ball, he can't do anything. But if you leave it in the in the, his pocket and he's able to make it, he could run out. So it's better to like give up one point than eight. So, but uh, there's a there's a rule if you have more than jaw rule. There's a ja rule. <laughs> no, sorry. If <laughs> if there are more than uh, four balls in the kitchen, then the fifth ball that is closest to the head string is going back to the spot. No, Do you no. know? Uh, can can that, you tell us why that is? Um, that, well, the, the, there's a rule here today that if we oh, that's a bad shot. If there are four balls in uh, past the head string. Uh, heading for the top cushion, and the fifth ball that crosses the head string uh, and joins the, those four balls gets respotted on the uh, uh, bulk line on the bottom. Uh, and do you know why uh, the rule? Yes, that's because of, that's because of the time, because then you get a up table game, and we uh, yeah, have well, let's say if you if you're um, if you're trailing or even up front and you don't want to leave shots for your uh, opponent, you can uh, get the balls up table. So it gets difficult, more difficult to get the balls in your pocket or in your opponent's pocket. <coughs> Especially if there are unexperienced players that, that even, uh, that it could really take a long time then, you know? So uh, one race to three could, could take hours. So, uh, wow, well, that's a bad bank. You should have should have made that. I especially yeah, seen he's, uh, he's a good banker. Yeah, right? but, the, but the pace was a little bit too hard. Too much. It should, it should be more uh, in, the, in, in his pocket. In his pocket. So, I don't know if you guys at home can see it, but uh, Rolf is, uh, is wearing 
uh, a T-shirt that says "Bank on, brother." Yes, and that's do you know what uh, what that is for? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's um, uh, there's a um, a pool player that's uh, sadly uh, uh, has passed away. Um, Freddy the Bear, as they call him, he's uh, a really good uh, bank player. As you can see on the back of the shirt, it says "Banking with the Beard." I have his DVDs, and there are, are books here also for sale from from Freddy the Beard to Betty Vigna, Vigna if, I, if I pronounce it uh, right. Um, and yeah, that's like the the the, the uh, like with John Brumback and those guys. Um, yeah, they're they're the bank pool players and the one pocket players who know the bank shots that don't go but do. You know the the, the bank shots. You think it's um, it's impossible. They know how to shoot it, and I have the DVDs at home, and I, I and I studied it a lot of times, and some of them I still can make, <laughs> but some of <laughs> some of them I can, and um, yeah, that it helps you in your game. It's hel helps you in your game, and you know you can you can push out or roll out uh, to a position that your um, opponent thinks. Uh, he's not going to make it, like in nine ball, and you take it on, you bank the ball, and you run out. So, that's, uh, so have you ever run out the uh, yeah, frame? <laughs> that's, this is a serious question. <laughs> no, I, just I ran out of gas. Mm, feel like you played it a little bit hard and got away with it a bit, but so in this early stage, when you have to bet on on one of those players, Melvin, who would you bet on? Well, um, it's difficult. I know. I, I there's like. Uh, first of all, I would bet on Rolf because he's Dutch. You know, you support your country. That's what I think. I support uh, my wallet. Yes. We have it. No, but and second of all, I know how uh, Rolf plays, and I don't know him, the other guy. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I would bet on Rolf. Yeah, you know, I've seen Rolf in the earlier match, and he was uh, actually playing some pretty solid uh, one pocket, and he, he made some good decisions. I had a few uh, unforced errors, though, but, you know, he played Alex. Alex was uh, was playing uh, really decent, and it uh, was, uh, was hard to beat, but... You know, uh, I think his chances are pretty good in this tournament. Yeah. yeah. Bring the ball back. Yeah, back.
Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, but um, Melvin, do you got some? Uh, do you've got some some one pocket experience? Because if I speak for myself, I pretty much uh, don't have a lot of experience in one pocket, and you know, I, I kind of feel like uh, it's a lot about playing uh, shot to nothing, like uh, playing uh, playing a little bit low percentage of shots with uh, safety in mind? Okay, Melvin is uh, a little bit unavailable now at the moment, but uh, you know, I kind of feel like that way, that they play a lot of these shots like playing into the pack and uh, you know uh, playing those shots you don't make you know nine out of ten but a lot of times they actually fall and um, but when they don't fall they still have haven't uh, gave any chances to their opponent so you know it's it's a really uh, like they say like really tactical and the the chess of pool sort of and when you dig into it it's really fun to watch yeah so sorry i was uh, unavailable i had to check because if they were doing the score it said 4-1 on the live score but there were 11 balls on the table so i checked it and um, but it was 4-0 so they corrected the score so yes Yeah, that's a nice shot. He felt like, yeah, I can. It's better to to throw what I was a talking point. about. Was what I was talking about. It's better to try and get that ball out or in, because uh, if he if he uh, leaves that ball there and and Thomas gets a shot, uh, he could pop a couple of balls and then play the good safety, and then he's in trouble. You know. So, hey, but there are, at the moment, two or three balls in the kitchen. I think it's two, two balls. So, two more. Yeah, and then the fifth ball is going to get, uh, or at least the ball closest to the head string is respotted if there are five balls or more in the kitchen. So, there can be more than four balls in the kitchen. That's the rule. And it can, can change. It it can change, right? If uh, if the tournament is going really slow. Yes, I think uh, they are. They can decide later on if it's taking longer than usual. They can say, okay, it's going to be three balls or two or you know, no. I don't think it's going to be more than three or less than three because uh, that would be crazy that every ball gets be spotted. So um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. This could be a. A long bet, yeah, sorry. And, um, <laughs> so, excuse me there. Uh, I had a rough, uh, rough couple of days, so, um, excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, without going into uh, uh, details, uh, you know, it's really great to have you here, Melvin. You've been through a lot these days, and uh, now I uh, really appreciate it that, uh, that you come all this way. You know, to uh, to have a good time here, and uh, you know, good to have you here, buddy. Thanks, man. It, uh, it's all good. Meanwhile, Thomas made a made a nice bank on the on the three ball uh, straight back, and uh, looks like he's going to try and pop two ball and hit the 
Yeah, I think it's gonna oh, no, gonna hit this pretty gonna... hard to 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 try to get the nine ball. Oh, sorry, I didn't say that. I played the save That's instead. It's a good shot. So joining me, Mr. Alex Laley, also known as the Plague from The Hague. How are you doing? Yeah, <laughs> I'm fine, Pascal. <laughs> oh, miscued. Is this the first rack? Uh, yeah, yeah, still uh, nil nil. I haven't seen him play, but Kirsch. But he's a member of the One Pocket Freunde Nord Deutschland group on Facebook. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you really dug into that uh, that stuff. Yeah. So what what kind of group is that? It's uh, just a group on Facebook. And I was checking if any one of them, you know, is interested in playing. As you know, I, I like to stir up action a little. A little is maybe a little bit of an understatement. Well, no, <laughs> a little. <laughs> Decent. And I like people, you know, I, I like if, if different disciplines are being played. So Rolf, for example, is from Hague 5, where they only play banks and one pocket. 
or only, you know, you'll see some people play rotation games or eight ball, but uh, uh, overall, most people there will play banks or one pocket. That's the that big in in uh, in Hague Five. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's not like in the states that people are are betting real high, but you know they're they're betting something. Yeah, they're. It's just a good shot by Kirsch. Wow. Let's not forget to talk about the game here. So Rolf is from from Hague Five, and he, he practices a lot with the Pepijn de Wit, who will be my, I think, you know, uh, 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 main competitor today. He beat me up last week. I played a long set race to eleven in Hague Five against Pepijn. Bank short, pool, right? Short drag banks, yeah, and he beat me up eleven three. <laughs> I uh, I heard some uh, some talks. <laughs> yeah, he played good. So, um, Kirsch is looking at either cutting the four ball in with a chance of getting shape on the nine, but I think he, he should focus mainly on making the four. That's exactly what he did. He took a risk a little bit with ta taking a lot of side spin on it to yeah. force it a little bit in. And... Uh, Gave away a little bit of uh, position, so uh, another another tough shot. The 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 fourteen ball is making it making it really hard to to play any kind of shot to nothing. Well, I would take out the fourteen here. I think that's what he's. No, no, he's cutting the nine. Oh wow! Great shot. So he's going to six all now to score. So he's back in the game. So he's looking at putting the 14. No, like no he'll, you he'll, said. He'll, he'll take it out. There's no need to pocket it. And that's the. You're obviously uh, one of the more experienced players here in the Netherlands for uh, uh, on the area of uh, one pocket. I don't think uh, one pocket is that big in the in the Netherlands. And, uh, well, you know, you played it obviously uh, uh, pretty often. Is this, uh, Do you feel like it's only in, in Hague 5 they play a lot of one pocket or only? No, it's it's picking up. It's picking up. Like, uh, there, there are some people I'm pushing. I'm pushing the, the Dutch top players. Uh, I push them to play more one pocket. So, Teutcher, Bicebos, you know, they're picking it up. Uh, Tim de Ruyter is playing a little more. Gradually, people are picking it up and learning what a great game it is. And it's also a good, good, a good way to to practice skills and gaining knowledge that you can put in use when playing rotation games. So, and uh, for the for the people at home, uh, when you say rotation games, what do you mean by by that? Uh, nine ball, ten ball. Where you pocket the balls in rotation? Oh, that's because uh, you have a game that's called rotation as well, right? Yeah. But that that has nothing to do with that. Uh, no. Uh, well, that's also a game where you pocket the <laughs> balls in <laughs> numerical order. Yeah, I think you know it's. Uh, I think it's important to play all games. And when Nick and Niels and I, myself, when we grew up playing, we have played all games. We have played, uh, you know, a lot of straight pool, eight ball, but also bank pool, three cushion, snooker, one pocket. I think now. I think to know that Niels, for example, started to win more when he became a winning player of big tournaments. That it was after he started to play uh, three cushion and uh, one pocket. Oh, seriously? Now, it isn't a uh, nice beat? I, f I, I kind of feel like uh, with uh, three cushion and uh, snooker that the, the tables are, you know, and the balls are so different than than with pool 
that uh, yeah, it, it kind of can can throw you off your pool game a little bit as well. But you're no, saying like I, pretty I, much the opposite right the, now. Yes, I totally uh, am convinced in the value of uh, differential learning. You know, if you are hitting balls on a snooker table, three cushion table, or pool table. It's the same areas in your brain that are put in use. It's just you're working a little more out of your comfort zone. And you know, pool players, carom players, you know, in, in our sport, they don't like to go outside their comfort zone. We all have, uh, all cueists have uh, autistic tendencies, I believe. <laughs> we like to control the setting and the rock, but... You learn a lot by opening up your brain and, and playing different stuff. It's, it's implicit learning. For example, what, what we do a lot with the Dutch team or what Niels and I have done a lot in the past is play nine ball with uh, scotch tape over our tip, which forces you to play uh, center ball. Yeah, I've, that, seen, I've seen you do that. That's a form of implicit learning because then then you're changing the task, which makes it more difficult, and you have to adapt. Now, you might not like it. <laughs> your brain doesn't like to adapt because your brain likes doing what it knows yeah. to do. But exactly there is the value it, that, that you force your brain in fi to find new solutions. And you get maybe more creative. Yeah, you're, you're doing new stuff, but still using the same parts in the brain. So, but in uh, do you think uh, creativity is a, is a big thing in, in one pocket? Uh, uh, I think it's more, uh, it's more about knowledge than about creativity. I think, yeah, it's... Maybe, maybe in the beginning of the game it was started with... Uh, cre uh, creativity, what now is uh, now became knowledge for the people who are starting today, because all the a lot of things are figured out already in the game. Like you know, a lot of shots that are uh, standard for you, like standard one pocket shots. Yeah. But there had there had to be uh, a moment when the game just started when people started to play it for the first time that you yeah, know but, someone yeah, has but, to but but that that's why the learning curve now in pool is is higher is steeper for 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 players and especially also in one pocket because you now can watch on youtube you can watch a lot of one pocket so you can learn quicker you don't have to invent all the shots yourself yeah knowledge spreads quicker now you know, I was uh, infected. Uh, you know, I already played one pocket, but uh, when I went to the Derby City a year ago as a coach, I got the pool bug again. And I'm just, <laughs> you know, I, I've, I study one pocket. I watch it a lot. And watching one pocket, you know, that, that, that triggers me. I like to watch because it makes me think and it makes me look for solutions on the table. In so, nine or ten ball, when I watch it, it's not a lot about solutions. It's more about uh, 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 mounting pressure and seeing how players cope with the pressure. But yeah, I don't, I don't see interesting solutions. Yeah, maybe once in a race to nine. Yeah, and that maybe, and at a really high level, it's uh, maybe uh, once in in three races to nine. Yeah, for example. Eight ball, eight balls already for me. I'm talking about me personally. More interesting to watch. If you see <coughs> Efren play eight ball, then then in every race you see him play like three, four great shots, where you see all the knowledge transpire in the shot, just like when you see him play one pocket. But when you see Efren play nine ball or ten ball, you know you have to wait longer to see one of those shots. Yeah, because it's less about solutions. Yeah. More about execution. Yeah, handling uh, the the mental stuff. You 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 thought a lot about that stuff, right? You you're giving uh, 
uh, like uh, trainings and uh, um, your coaching and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, well, I work for the Federation and I work for myself abroad. And recently I organized a, a seminar about the mental game. Yeah, I think it's interesting. How did it went? Uh, and uh, and and <laughs> I like to, um, you know, it's stuff that I learned. So I want to pass on some knowledge. Yeah. And talking about it forces me to think about it a little more. Which helps you learn more. Yeah. Again. Kiersch, okay, now this is something to talk about, but what Kiersch did here, he needs one ball and Rolf needs two balls. Common sense dictates that when you only need one ball, that you leave the 12 ball alone, because Kiersch brought the 12 into play, which means that he's mounting the pressure on himself, because now... Rolf can, uh, or Van Asten is, yeah. can win the game. If the if the 12 ball had stayed on the up up table, out of play, then uh, Van As would have had to win two safety battles. If you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, and it's it's pr protecting the balls, uh, protecting the score, play the score. That's. That's something very important to learn. It's uh, sort of an... Uh, uh, how do you say that? Uh, to have that... When you when you leave that 12 ball up the table, you don't have any chance to... to yeah, well, there is a chance he could run those two balls out, but yeah. he has to... If you're leading in the ball count... You want to take balls out of play. Same in bank pool. If there are balls hanging in the pocket and you need one ball, the other guy needs four, then you leave the dead balls alone. Yeah. So so in, in one pocket, you can divide the game into uh, three segments. So there would be... Uh, oh, he fouled. Both playing for two now. You have the, the break... It's the first phase, so one player is breaking, thereby gaining advantage. Um, the other player, the incoming player, is trying to neutralize the advantage of the break, coming out of the break. That's the first phase. Then you have the middle game. The middle game is where the player that is leading in ball count, that is up 5-2 in the ball count, will try to block the game. We'll try to send balls up table to protect the lead. That's the middle game. And and the other player would try to do the opposite. Keep the balls down table. Open. In play. Yeah. And then you have the end game. So this, this is the end game. The end game where it's very important that the table rolls straight. And this table isn't exactly rolling straight. <laughs> which makes it interesting again. <laughs> it's also, by the way, a very important skill when you're gonna when you start to play more one pocket to learn how to roll the ball. Yeah, I've seen I've seen you play a lot of uh, short game shots, a lot of uh, shots that were needed just a little little hit. They were, you know, easily. Uh, shot too hard you know I've seen you play a lot of those shots so uh, obviously it's uh, pretty important I've seen a lot of this as well in your earlier matches a lot of uh, bank shots over more than two rails or two, over more than one rail yeah, whatever gets the object ball in front of your hole with a safe cue ball yeah so as long as your cue ball is safe, you're saying you can try everything. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But something that many uh, uh, players do, you know, when they start to play one pocket, they'll be 
shooting at their hole too much. They're always trying to get the ball towards their hole. But in the end game, one, two, three, four balls on the table, you also play, you, you're you always actually just playing to better your position, your table position. So that doesn't necessarily mean that the object ball needs to be positioned in front of your hole. It also can, uh, for example, uh, when, when the ball is spotted, then... You can you can have a a bank shot or uh, I've seen some in your game against uh, Rolf, who is now playing Rolf on us. Rolf, yeah, Rolf, <laughs> Rolf, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm no, going into yeah. the R, the R, little bit of a pirate mode, I guess. Uh, Pierce is not uh, happy with this one. But what happened? Yeah, I, you you've. Were you you guys were battling with um, uh, with a, a ball in the pocket and try to keep it out and uh, just hit it hitting it really softly mm -hmm. and in the end uh, uh, both of you I guess uh, had one time you potted the ball and you know left the 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 bank shot the cross bank. On with on the spotted ball, so the cue ball up the table and the ball spotted. You know that's a pretty uh, standard uh, one pocket shot, right? The cross bank, like leaving it over the pocket and sending the cue ball back up the table. Yeah, this is wait. This is this was game ball for uh, Rolf, and the Kirsch, you know, gets punished for playing a little a little too aggressive. Yeah, trying to cut that 13 in, but he lost position uh, control of the cue ball. But that, well, you know, the the the, the cross corner that you're talking about with the object ball on the spot and the cue ball close to the short rail. That's not an easy shot. I mean, it's it's a way where you can get the object ball towards your pocket for sure, but the cue ball will have a lot of speed. Yeah, the speed is maybe uh, the hard part in that. You know, if, if the bank is not guaranteed and, and you cannot control the, the cue ball well, then it might not be the best shot to play. And, uh, and it depends, you know. Some players are very very good at waiting. Some players are very good at executing. Yeah, that and is... The best, the best would be, I think, to, to, to you know, to, to be able to do both. Uh, to recognize your moment. Yeah. I think when people ask me what they can learn from one pocket, even if they're never going to be gambling at it or playing tournaments, they ask me, what can I learn for one, from one pocket playing nine ball, ten ball, etc.? I say it's, it's the, the, the control, a controlled cue ball when lagging the cue ball, slow roll, good speed control. So safeties, some kicks, um, but also to recognize the moment in a match. That's a big thing in one pocket. When to play conservative and when to push. Yeah, I, I thought a lot about um, uh, how I call it is to be to be. Honest with yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To know if it's on or not. Yeah. To. Uh, do you think he tried to 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 send that one over to the pocket? To his no. Pocket? No. No. I think I think he tried to clip the fourteen out of there as well. But obviously, uh, it no. didn't work out. But many many players are. I think if you're learning one pocket, you know, there's a bunch of stuff that you need to learn. Oh, how you like this? Smart move by Rolf. Um, but it's, you know, you have to learn to, to take a foul. So if, if you look around, you see no one sacrificing a ball by making a foul in order to escape a trap that they are put in. But if you're pay, paying a ball to escape a trap, 
You have still chances to yeah, win. Yeah, that, that, that's not so big. And pocketing the opponent's ball. Like just now we saw Kiers play a very aggressive move. It didn't work out. And now he's in a worse position than before. Oh, this was all right. But uh, okay, now look. Uh, Rolf has a, a bank on the eight. The 14 functions as a sideboard, and the 4 5 1 on the other side are doubling up. Yes. So, this is a free shot for Rolf. Do you think he went for the bank and just. Yeah, yeah, he played hit the bank. Wrong? He played the bank. And normally, for sure, he would have. Uh, uh, he wouldn't have played it with a high ball, but punch it and, and spin the ball, make it turn. So, I talked to this earlier with Melvin, but uh, there is this rule that you don't, uh, you're not allowed to have more than four balls in the kitchen. Yes. And uh, that's about. You know, fasting it up a little bit. Yeah, it's a tournament rule. It helps to speed up the game so that the, all the balls won't go up table. But, you know, yeah. In, in the States or where people have more experience with the game, you'll find more players uh, uh, using it as a strategy, up table game. And then it's possible that 8, 9, 10, 11 balls will be wedged up near one of the corner pockets. Um, but here in Holland, sometimes you see it happen with people that don't know the game. They end up sending all the balls up table. Yeah, just like no for not for not knowing what to do. Yeah, and thinking, okay, I'm not gonna. If I do this, I'm not gonna give a give a shot. Yeah. So, but with the with the bigger players, they do that as well as a strategy, you say. And uh, what is the strategy in that? Is is it kind of uh, to well to 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 wear mentally? your opponent yeah. well you know, for example if um, you know if say I'm playing Niels Niels Feier Niels executes like a, a mofo <laughs> or how can I say it no he executes so like good. one of the best and he's <laughs> not he's not the most patient player so if it's his break that puts me at a disadvantage uh, uh, then I could play less aggressive uh, uh, shots, like non-moves, and s immediately start to send the balls up table. And I will, I will, you know, it, it could be a tactic to to make Niels freak out, because then he might get too anxious in trying to avoid me sending the balls up table. So it's a lot about breaking your opponent down. That's that's like, you know, there's different types of one pocket. You have your Scott Frost power, <laughs> power one pocket, very aggressive, uh, 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 cluster banks sending balls towards your hole, or like the, the 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 more old school style where they play or old school. They say uh, Chicago has this type of one pocket. <laughs> where, you, where you squeeze and break your opponent down and playing a very conservative style. So they they, they uh, matched it to, uh, to a city, just like uh, the banks with uh, Kentucky, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, when you say this, I, I, I feel like it's, uh, it's more than, you know, uh, normally with nine ball, uh, I used to tell to myself, you know, don't play... The player just, you know, uh, play your own game. But yeah. in this case, you're saying... Oh, like yeah, and exactly. And that's exactly where you learn in one pocket. Because this is... When you play 9 ball, 10 ball, this, this element doesn't come into play that much. Uh, the, your opponent and uh, weighing the moment of the match. But this is what you do constantly in one pocket. If you're playing like if you know if you play Rolf, he knows the game for for Dutch standards. He knows the game, but he doesn't execute so good. So so it would be a better option to put the cue ball up table 
uh, uh, touching the, the short rail. That that's a trap for someone that is technically not so strong. Yeah, so in so, that so case, you're actually playing playing your opponent. That's what you do in one pocket. Yeah, and and you also play, you know, you play the moment, you play the table, and you you have to weigh all those options, and that's exactly why it's such a good training. Yeah, it's really difficult as well because. You know, you only have uh, like a hundred percent of of uh, uh, concentration to uh, to give, and uh, you have to you have to give some of that percentages to uh, thinking about your opponent and 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 stuff. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Or yeah, yeah. Well, so so you have to. Yeah, you, uh, I understand. So you have to. Work harder for your for your own uh, executing uh, moments. No, yeah, this is uh, it's knowledge, but um, you have to expand your ability of processing all the information that you register, and that is difficult. Yeah, <laughs> that is difficult, and it takes it's you develop it. So when you start out, you're not registering a bunch of stuff. And that and that's for me the beauty of one pocket because you know you, you never stop learning, and and that's the difficulty for for you know young players that come from nine ball ten ball. They're used to 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 play an easy game. Now I have to three, so it means I have to go to the four. Yeah. No, no thoughts, no thinking. No, it's actually it's really. Uh, it's, it's 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 the same for the same reason. Eight ball is is such a complex game because you have all the choices, and of course, out of ten racks, maybe three, four racks are easy to close, to run out, but the other racks, racks six, seven racks, you know, to it's difficult because you have options, and and all those options where you have to weigh all the information that that's that that's I think the point you were trying to make. It takes a lot of uh, cerebral endurance to handle this. Oh wow, man! <laughs> For a long time. For the people at home, he, he actually is Dutch, but you know, <laughs> he is. Uh, he uh, I don't know. Did you took some English classes or <laughs> got some uh, some nice vocabulary? So yeah, but actually, my my thinking process was uh, going the other way, and it's uh, it's when you say it like that, it's really really obvious. Like, hey, of course you can, you always can learn. Well, you need, you know, you you don't have any ambitions to become a professional player. I think no, no. Um. So you don't need to learn do do what you enjoy doing. But if if you are a pool player with ambitions and maybe you have some ambitions, it's it's all it's not you know most emphasis is always put on technique and and being able to deliver the cue straight, and it needs to be straighter and it needs to be straighter. And people only think about their technique, but. You know, when when you're trying to play a winning pool, it's it's as much about hitting the ball straight as it is about picking the right shots and staying cool under pressure. So, you know, there's it's overemphasized technique. It's important, yeah, yeah, but uh, but knowledge is too. I was uh, more going in the direction of, uh, you know, I, I thought I don't want to play my opponent because that way I need to, uh, you know, I always think in percentages of, of what kind of, I only have that mu much concentration to to give away to situations. And I always thought, okay, I'm just going to give it away to uh, to. Uh, figuring out what to do on the table and not think about my opponent and um but when you say it like that you can 
if you do that a lot, you can develop that, of course. Yeah, and you're not constantly thinking about your opponent. You're thinking about your opponent when it's relevant to way his his competence. You know, when you're playing a push out, you are probably thinking about your opponent when you're playing nine ball. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. Your push out true, yeah, dep depends on your opponent already. If you're playing uh, Niels or you're playing Melvin, it's different. Uh, only a little. <laughs> hey, let, let's try and follow this match. Because yeah, we're trailing off. Uh, four, eight, twelve, two, one. Scores correct. And the uh, the big problem ball for Kirsch is the the eleven. Because because of the eleven, uh, he has some difficulty. Now the eight fifteen, the eight fifteen are two balls that I, being Kirsch, would would not like to open up. Because they don't go to uh, Rolf's pocket. Yeah. M maybe you must. And maybe maybe they, they will come in handy to play defense later. But when you have choice, leave them alone. Try to figure out an, uh, a yeah. plan with, with the other balls. So, good shot. Good shot by Rolf. He is... Uh, um, He's protecting the 11. Right now, it's just about protecting the 11. And now, Kirsch can play the same shot like before. From the one, elevate the cue a little, a little mess, say, eh? go to the short rail. Protect the four. Yeah, because um, obviously you, you say that because... Uh, the balls on the on the reel are really handy. No, I mean at, at the moment for Kirsch it's the two, uh, the two, three, and four, and for Rolf it's the eleven. There aren't any other balls like now. Kirsch hasn't protected the four, so this this is easy for Rolf now. He can take out the four and protect the eleven. Just he doesn't need to do anything. Just hit. Straight into the four. So this is in this game. It's he's, he's playing a different shot. Okay, now I talked about the eight fifteen before. He chose to open those two balls up. That mounts pressure for Kirsch. He did. He wanted to hit the ball a little thinner, landing on top of the twelve with the cue ball, and leaving the thirteen and four doubled up. No shot. Now Kirsch is, will maybe be tempted to play the ten, attack the ten, and go to the long rail in between the eight eleven. I think that's on. Yeah. Do you think so? Isn't isn't there the I think Isn't the scratch. Uh, well, m maybe it's, n it's not on, but if it's on without a scratch, then he, he has a free shot. He can hang it up, and if he makes it, he's in business. Yeah. Look, good speed. Oh. Yeah, wow. Nice call. So, so the shot that Rolf played was a good shot to play. But he executed poorly. I talked about the, you know, in one pocket, learning to uh, uh, control the speed of the cue ball, rolling the cue ball, but also clipping balls, hitting thin. It's what Efren is so good at. So Rolf has a cut shot on the 11, but it's tough. He has a bank on the 2. What? Um, is uh, maybe from the same uh, difficulty level. I think I think there are two shots that I 
think oh, this is tricky to, to call shots in one pocket. But he could yeah. leave it on the other side of the 12th, leaving Kiers doubled up with the 12, 13, 4, and 10. Just waiting, waiting for a better shot. Oh, no, I didn't like this. Yes, and now Kiers has at least three balls that are yeah, good for him, right? Well, it's not easy to give him the next shot. I think he I, can hit this pretty full. I, 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 I think, look, the 10 wasn't oh. frozen. I would have banked the two ball into the 10, run into the 11 with the cue ball, and have shape on the one. <laughs> yeah, that would be... Well, that, that, that's a good bank, but, you know, with, with the other ball... At the that would be an all-in-one shot. Would have been. But, you know, maybe it's... Uh, I don't know how long he's uh, a member of this uh, club you've been talking about. But Oh, uh, <laughs> one pocket far in the north. <laughs> Um, so what does he have at the moment? He's looking at cutting the one again, which is not a nice shot. But he made it. But and he scratched. He scratched. Is that unlucky? No, I think continuously he's getting bad rolls when playing these aggressive shots. I think he's trying to force the issue too much. So now Rolf has to run balls. Yeah. Which is which is difficult. You know, I've practiced, like I told you, I've practiced a lot of one pocket in the past year, studied the game. Then I went to the derby, and now I'm confident about my moving, about my knowledge of the game. I still got so much to learn, but I know how to protect myself at the table but i don't r run enough balls so the execution is but yeah, it, it goes down it goes down just like you said because of all the 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 the, the, the mental stuff and the, the brain game that i'm trying to play the the execution goes down and i think that that takes uh, time time and experience is it Oh wow! I I didn't think it it passed. So he's got four balls sitting ready, which would be enough. Four balls and a bank on a two. I don't understand why he wouldn't play the eleven now. No, me neither. Well, that's a lucky bounce on the four. Because the eleven would give uh, automatic shape to to the ball he just shot or maybe one of the more outside maybe for the three or the eight he could have played position with the 11 but uh, well, i probably wanted to leave it as backup ball No, just a little bit awkward. I don't think the two is uh, yeah. available. No, no, he, he will. I guess he will play the eight. My advice would be to play the eight and and just play the eight. Just cinch the ball. Yeah, big chance he's he's gonna run into the to the four if he well, tries to go right. up and just down. No, yeah, yeah, but don't don't force it. He can miss the eight going up and down. He's risking. You know, if 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 he hangs the eight ball up in front of the hole, it's good too. Yeah, that gives uh, play it soft pressure with for uh, for Kiers. Well, he needs to protect the lead. Play it soft with a trace of check side.
Yeah, that's what he played. Good shot. So, this is something new to me that I see Rolf playing to protect the score. He's up 6-2. to two. The only thing he needs to do is close the game down and then his, his banking skills and knowledge will come into play. He's not supposed to lose from here. And that's what you talked about. The 11 was uh, Rolf's uh, his backup ball and Kirsch. Made sure uh, <laughs> that one was out of the picture for uh, the next shot. Right now, Rolf is looking at a way to fire at his pocket. Don't. Don't. Take the two and one out of play. I mean, we're only playing a little tournament here, but still, he would be happy winning a match. Yeah, for sure. Just send the one ball up table. Take it out of the game. Oh, watch out, watch out. Well, this is good. See, his table position is better than it was before. This is good enough. He doesn't need to be aggressive. And now he has two balls available for him. Kears is, yeah, well, maybe the 13, but... Uh, Kears needs to get the cue ball back to the short rail and get the two ball on his side. I think, look, uh, cue ball is close to the rail, but he should have done it in a way to get the two ball uh, uh, into a more favorable position for him. So, would you prefer to play it all around to go uh, to get it on the downside on the table or just no, on the no, left side? No, that shot wasn't on. Just, you know, probably a bank towards the, the 12 and 11. One rail or uh, uh, two rails with the short rail. So for so, the so, so look look now the two ball the two ball is in a in a uh, in a nasty position for Kirsch but he's the one that put the two ball there so now he he's playing it you know he's not in a trap but so now what I would do is just maybe pocket the two or sending it towards the twelve with, over the short rail. And put the cue ball on the short rail. You see, now he tried to play an aggressive shot. He tried to play for his hole. The result should be that he finds himself freezing to the short rail. In a tough spot. In the spot where he could have left Rolf to play from now. Yeah. But he played. He, he fired at his pocket. See, Rolf in this position needs to do nothing. Just he doesn't need to develop the game. He can wait. Yeah, and uh, especially seeing that uh, Kiers is playing some aggressive shots, uh, which we talked about earlier. When he's paying attention to Kiers and see that he's took a, took on a few aggressive shots, he can can just wait and see right now. So. So how can Kears get balls into play? He can pocket the one. Yeah. He can maybe bank the 11 towards the chalk on the short rail and try to hide behind the, the 13. I did your for first choice. Yeah, but he didn't leave the cue ball close to the rail. So now Rolf has a free... 
did I say free shot? No, he doesn't have a free shot. Again, again, he doesn't need to play the one. Rolf. Oh, he could cut it. Sorry. Good shot. Phew. Oh, no. It's okay. I don't, I don't understand this. He doesn't, you know, he's not gonna lose. He's probably not, not gonna lose from here, but he doesn't need to hit the four. Just play the 13, but the, the 13 is blocking the bank on the 11. So if he takes out the 13, he's leaving, he's opening up a banking lane for Kier. She doesn't want it. I say just clip a ball and send the cue ball uh, down table towards the rail. Maybe he can he can bank the 12 ball towards his pocket and send it, sending the cue ball around the 11 in between the 11 13 towards the short rail. So he's he's now going to play the 13. The shot is I think to play the 12 go in between the 11 13 with the cue ball. Then you do two things, you leave distance, you leave the cue ball close to the rail, and you bring one ball, the 12, towards your side. Now he has opened up a banking lane. Good speed on the cue ball though. So not easy. Yeah, but just like you said, he tried to develop something. Didn't left any obvious shots, but... You know, you want to take the 12 ball out. Move the 12, maybe even send it to, not really towards your hole, just around the 13-11 and hide behind the 13-11, if it's on, if the shot is on. Don't be too aggressive. Good shot. Free shot. He's gonna double kiss, I think. Looking at the bank, he can he can play the bank on the four if he controls the cue ball. No. To stay behind the twelve or hit the twelve. You know the finish line can do uh, can do things to people, I guess. Not especially this uh, situation, but you know there are. You know, I've seen some moments in my own game that uh, I've made some stupid uh, decisions based on seeing the finish line. Yeah, but losing what, afterwards. <laughs> but, but, but what happened now that, that makes you say that? No, not that uh, Rolf was... Uh, oh, wow, yeah. No, I, I said nothing, uh, not especially about this situation, but... No, I, I was thinking about he, he was taking on the bank. And I just, uh, it just made me think about some situations uh, I knew from, from other disciplines. So, but... In the meantime, it's 2-0 for Mr. Van Us. Van Us. 
So there's uh, some misunderstanding because uh, Van Aas thinks uh, that they're playing a race to two. Kiers thinks they're playing a race to three. I think officially it's a race to two in the losers round, but informally they were told that it would be a race to three. So I think it's up to yeah. Tournament director uh, uh, Nepse Flinke Flanken is uh, <laughs> making the call that they're playing a race to three. <laughs> yeah, you should do a commentary uh, at uh, ESPN. Did you? <laughs> uh, can you for, can you stand in front of the camera? Wait. Yeah. yeah, this is the guy, okay. ladies and gentlemen. That's Nepsi Flinke Flanken. How you like the shirt, uh, Fosco? I made it myself. <laughs> but seriously. I ordered the template. In and out. On the schabloonwinkel.nl. <laughs> and bang on, brother. <laughs> so there's everybody. So that is, uh, that's Aspen. He's the one organized this uh, great tournament in this great venue. So, thanks a lot, Aspen, also known as Nepsa. <laughs> yeah, and one thing, and one thing on on Facebook, it's you know Facebook is a perfect medium to to promote to promote your tournament. So we had 32 people all enthusiastic and wanting to be in, but now uh, D Day has come and we had too many no shows. Yeah, that really, you know, that 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 really sucks. That people say they come and don't take the trouble to uh, uh, inform us or inform Nepsha that, that that they can't make it. Just a lesson learned. Next time uh, we will have uh, entries paid in advance. Yeah, just as easy as it is to uh, inform that you are willing to come. The the same thing for for if you not available you can just leave a message and, and say like hey i'm sorry i you know i wanted to come but i can't so um last rack a good example of playing the score and and i don't know if we have any viewers uh, from the US, but really for people here, playing the score is something they still need to learn. I'm playing in the Rolf's club. I go there quite a bit and I give uh, like, you know, pretty, pretty rough handicaps. But still, they, they don't move the balls up table. When I'm giving 10-4, 11-4, uh, some crazy stuff, they don't know this I've trick. seen you give 11-3. There's a guy in Hague 5, I give 10-1. No. Oh. I would take that bet. I would do it. Yeah. You got 10-3. I'll, I'll try 10-3. <laughs> yeah, well, I could take it. I would uh, be tempted. Maybe we could try it out. Okay, look, now we have an interesting interesting position because uh, Rolf hasn't protected the 210, but whatever Kirsch is going to do, the 13 is a threat. A threat. So this is, you know, the, as, as straightforward as this looks, on the diagonal, towards object balls, towards the, your opponent's pocket, this is a, a, a tough spot for uh, Kirsch. Actually, what I like here, he can he can kick behind the two. I like kicking behind the two. Kicking behind the two, even if I'm gonna foul, I I, I want him to not see the thirteen. And if he sees the thirteen, his banking lane will be blocked by the two fourteen. A kick behind the two. That's the shot. That's very controllable. Very controllable. No risk. And a chance of really sticking the cue ball behind the ball.
Now Kiersch got lucky because the cue ball's frozen to the 14. So maybe Rolf cannot bank the 13 back to his pocket, but he can bank the 13 with speed onto the 7. Into the stack, making balls go towards his hole. Yeah, that's I've seen. Uh, oh, I've seen that a lot. That shot, what you just said, into the pack. Yeah, bank into the pack, and I've seen you make that ball. It's a shot I practiced. I got this DVD from uh, Scott Frost. He's the best at it, banking, banking a ball uh, uh, for a half ball contact onto another ball and making it. You know, if you have, if, if you play a power shot like that and you move six, five, six balls towards your side of the table, it takes away a lot of uh, pressure because uh, uh, your opponent will be less likely to run many balls. Of course, I've seen him. He played it pretty soft, but you can. You can't hit at hard, of course, just like with straight pull, because you you want to end up having balls, uh, have your cue ball able cue to ball. pop. Yes, yeah. you said you said I didn't even let you finish, but <laughs> that, that, that's very important. Cue ball, you play cue ball one pocket. I mean, pool is already, you know, um, it's in between snooker and and carom, but one pocket is very much in between. A carom, three cushion billiards, and pool. Because on those cluster banks where you move multiple balls or try to, it's about controlling the cue ball. And that's where many players, when they begin to play one pocket, go wrong. They are so focused about making the ball or putting it right in front of the pocket that they lose the cue ball. Oh, oh. nice shot and sort of lucky as. Yeah, he tapped the table there, saying, "Hey, sorry, man. You know that wasn't wasn't on purpose, but hey, it counts." Smiling a little bit there, <laughs> etching his head like, "Okay." Now the thirteen <laughs> doesn't go, so he can, you know, he can be anxious and take those balls out, convert his uh, uh, lead in the ball count. He's up four zip, or he could. He has a bank on the twelve to put it over his hole. So very weak shot here by Kirsch. Uh, weak, weak, you know, maybe it was... Ish. <laughs> Weakish. <laughs> weak Kirsch. <laughs> you know, I thought I was the only one doing that stuff, but... <laughs> he probably wasn't convinced about his uh, uh, shot choice, and it showed. He can check the cue ball for shape on the 14. Yeah, he hit it way thicker than what you de described. He could have hit it way a lot of thinner. Now, now I like bank. Bank. He will bank it, but he will bank. He will roll, I think, and check. But he's a good banker. He need, He will learn. He will learn. Oh, this is a good shot. Yeah. He could have played into the 4-8. Just a, a stun shot. Straight oh, wow, stun, yeah. Straight stun and develop. You know, no big chance to not leave a shot. But as good as he banks, you know, he needs to get a little more confident. That he is a good banker. No, he knows he's a good banker, but he doesn't play a lot out of his uh, uh, home club. And he, you know, and he has trouble uh, uh, putting his banking skills in practice in one pocket. Do you think uh, how big of a part is is uh, banking in one pocket? Well, it, it's it's big. It's not like in in nine ball or ten ball. No, it's it's bigger in one pocket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. It's big, but uh, you know, uh, speed control, banks, kick shots, running balls. Six, eight, four, three. 
Nice picture of plan B. In the back we have Takema playing live music. Gijs van Helmond is playing. I don't know. Do you know what the guy with the beard's name is? No, you know, he's a uh, beard. Yeah, he we'll got a nice beard, beard man. It's, uh, you know, you got a, I don't uh, have a beard, so, you know, you can see at home. There's nothing. You know, I can, I can not shave for a year. And still, <laughs> few hairs. Um. So they put up one ball. They found out there was a ball extra on the side pocket, but they need to adjust the ball count. And I think Rolf is on two. No, oh, three each. So it's it's one pocket is about trapping your opponent, putting your opponent in a bad spot. Now in this in this situation, you know, a, a player might be desperate in finding something aggressive. Now this he's looking at kicking into the stack. That's pretty aggressive. You don't need to kick to 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 have or to acquire a dominant table position. He, he could also, uh, I I don't know what, but leave the you know clip it and leave him on the rail. He can roll maybe into the five and stick it to the five, making the ten ball come out. This is this is not controllable. Oh, there's desperate. the cue ball going. Desperate. Uh. This was a desperate shot. You Trailing. You don't have to, you know, if, if it's not there, you don't have to make it. The guy with the beard is Kevin Den Hartig from Haarlem. <laughs> nice shot by Gijs. Also known as the hamster. Look, look, look. This is a good example from Rolf. Just give your opponent nine feet. If you don't know what to do, distance. Distance, close to the rail. And again, sort of diagonal on a line with the five. It's not easy. So now they, they have, you, you see, put, uh, the one second, Pascal. So now what Rolf oh. did with ball in hand has led to this position. Kiers played a good shot. Kubel is on the rail. So even though it's it's not easy for Rolf, this is a better position than he had in his previous inning. You know, slowly he's developing his table position. He's protecting the six and five. He's still on the defense, Kirsch. Not strongly, but it takes time and practice in one pocket to learn to recognize what dominance is if you don't have a ball over hanging over your hole. Okay, this is a good shot. Two rails towards his side. That's a good shot, but... Protecting the ten would have been nice and possible. It was possible to protect the ten. That looked like a weakish shot. Now Kiersch has has chance to oh. turn the tides. He has a bank on the ten. He has a free bank on the ten, and he can bank the three ball into the stack, back into the stack, and the cue ball will run into the nine. I think he's straight bank on a seven. Oh wow. Yeah, there's the banking again. Would be nice if uh if you're you know sure about making it. 
Yeah, but if you're not sure, yeah. You don't have, many times you're not sure in one pocket. But you play a shot where you're safe. You know, it's, it's. Uh, a one pocket isn't as much do or die as, as is nine ball. So clip the eight, protect the five six. Is it possible to say that in one pocket you don't uh, play the all or nothing shots? Well, sometimes you do. It depends. Look, if you're if you're losing six one in ball count, um, and you're losing. The moving part, you know, they, they say, if you're down, I told you to play the score. So if you're up, up in the ball count, 5-1, 6-2, whatever, you play defensive and conservative, avoiding risks, just uh, protecting the lead. Uh, uh, Reverse-wise, when you're down in the score, you, you look to play more aggressive. Because if you don't play more aggressive, you need to win uh, uh, five, six, seven more times more safety battles than your opponent to win the game, which is unlikely if it's an even match. Yeah, that's pretty funny because in the same way, when you're playing more aggressive, when you're behind, you're playing sort of uh, just the game your opponent wants you to play, uh, playing his you know, a uh, more safety-ish uh, game. So when you're you're up like five-one, and you're not giving, you're not taking any chances and uh, putting ball safe. And your opponent, you want your opponent to to to, to do something uh, reckless or aggressive, and that. But on the other hand, it's it's the the right thing to do for him. Yeah, all in moderation, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. But you know, it's uh, kind of uh, funny that that both things are uh, the right thing to do. But also, and that that's especially in in you know when 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 players are gambling at one pocket. Um, with a lot of grinding and squeezing and even risk avoiding play, you can claw yourself back into the game. Claw yourself back into the game, but it takes a lot of energy. So maybe you're losing six one, and and fifty minutes later, it's seven six for him. And if you know, you can recover three four balls and still lose the wreck. Um, but having spilled a lot of valuable energy. I'm not saying you should ever throw away uh, a game. But uh, in one pocket, in long sessions, uh, patience and energy and stamina comes into play. So uh, which pocket is Rolls? This one. You know, you just pointed. <laughs> yeah, no, I was asking <laughs> you, but it's it's obvious. Okay, good shot again by Rolf. Straight in on the five, on the diagonal towards his pocket. Now, Kirsch, you have to think, is it good or not for Kirsch that the 10, 8 and 6 are doubled up? Not. It's not good. So now, if he clips the 10, it goes past the five, puts the cue ball on the short rail, then he has made a move. He has developed those yeah. balls. <laughs> he has made a move. <laughs> well, that, 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 that's how they call it. He yeah, has, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, li I like it. 
Maybe. Only thing like this, where the cue ball ended up, there is a bank on for Rolf. But the 15-4 is also available. It's it's a combination. I don't know. Uh, I know Kiers has looked at it. Rolf has not. Uh, so maybe... He and I think Kiers can cut the 15. The combination is on. He has spotted it. So this is... This could be big. L lackadaisical from uh, Rolf. But he hasn't spotted this. He yeah. thought he had a free shot. Oh. Even bigger. Oh, no. He had he had the combination. Combination was on. Now here I would either lag the three past the four or bank the three into the four and with oh, I even could make it. Good shot. Squeeze the three ball. It was a good bank. Oh, uh, Kiers really gave away this 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 opportunity. You know, he had that uh, combination. He he could have played that combination, and he tried a uh, half a uh, half a pocket shot and missed it. One well, question, Pascal, you can see it better. Is the 11-7, is it lined up towards Kirsch's pocket? Yeah, it, it, it looks like. I don't know how much the 15 is interfering, but it looks like it's on. But I think we're going to figure out pretty soon. Yeah, it, it looks like it's lined up, but I think it, it developed in the last uh, shot he played. But you see... You see how, and it's, um, I'm not trying to be too critical, but how difficult it is to be continuously uh, alert in this game. Rolf is making good shots, he has good faces, and faces where he, you know, he's making thinking errors, not checking what goes and what not. It's okay to execute poorly, but it's not okay to to overlook things. So is this uh, five all? Five all. Yes. Oh wow. There goes the the sign. <laughs> so, but um, good moment. We uh, we were talking about you know uh, energy and uh, next to energy you have also concentration. What do you know about Czechio, uh, Alex? Um, well, I know it, it is being used by uh, many top players with uh, enthusiasm. I, you know, not always, not every tournament, but uh, I, I also use it. Sometimes I clearly feel like it is giving me an edge and sometimes uh, maybe a little less, but uh, I'll still have my can and my pills. It's all doping tested and regulated, so uh, that's cool there. No. Oh. Awesome. So, yeah, obviously, uh, great thanks to to Czechio because uh, for sponsoring this uh, event. Also, uh, a lot of a lot of credit to Eightball Factory and uh, Longoni Cues, and uh, of course uh, to Money Battle for the live stream. 
thank you to ourselves. <laughs> so, um, so five back, all back to the table. This yeah. was a, this was a good shot by Kiersch, not playing towards his pocket, but table position. So he left the balls in sort of a reverse diagonal. No banks on for Rolf. So the only thing Rolf can now look for is to move balls towards his side of the table. It doesn't need to be his pocket. He didn't recognize the shot, so he played a smart shot. Look at the speed control there. Just leave in distance. This is the trap. So he recognized that he didn't have a, a clear shot. Well, Kiers was kind enough to uh, help Money Battle out with the uh, <laughs> with the uh, with the commercials. Look now, Rolf can. It looks like he can play this. He can, he can play something, he can play the 10 or he can play the 6 to get them towards his side of the table. Very dangerous. Didn't like that. This banks, it looks, it looks like a, a kiss. But the kiss is not on. The only thing is that he needs to control the cue ball. Yeah, it really looks like a, like a, you you talked about a double kiss, I presume. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. It really looks like a double kiss. Yeah, he's looking at it right now. So, but what makes you say that it's not a kiss? Is it just you know? Well, the the cue ball can be away in time. He needs to play it with a lot of right spin though, and the the side pocket will become large. So he hit it very fat, fat. Yeah, and if he hit it more thin, then the side pocket would have come more into play for the yeah. cue ball. So it was, it was, it was a little bit dangerous. He can bank, Rolf can bank the six back towards his side and, and position the cue ball at the short row below the eight. Not leaving a bank on the ten. This is possible too. Still on his side. Still on his side, but now Kiers can cross the eight, make the cue ball come back, and eight ball will track towards the 11 10. So then, then Rolf will be back in the starting position, and he has gained nothing. So is that something? Because so Kiers played differently again. He, he's trying to play at shoot at his his hole. You know these things about you know gaining. Uh, position well no 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 not knowing okay I'm, but I'm, I'm, you... I'm guessing I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> formulating my opi okay. opinion about how I see how I see the play but okay but uh, let's say uh, you were there uh, playing these kind of shots and uh, okay is that something when when you don't have uh, you don't didn't put a ball over to your pocket, but you just gained some position in your opinion. Well, uh, do you get some kind of energy out of that, or uh, energy? Yeah, or uh, well, well I, I'm, at least I'm avoiding pressure. You know, it's a, I experience pressure if if I'm in a, if I have a bad table position, I feel pressure, and if my you know, and if I make a good shot, I alleviate pressure, and I'm starting to put pressure on my opponent and that feels nice yeah yeah the, as i said energy not yeah. in the kind of physical energy it's, but it's you know sort of uh, mental boost 
Well, mental boost comes, you know, just like in nine ball, in one pocket, you can get in stroke when, you know, when for a half hour, 40 minutes, that, that you're really sticking him behind balls and that the cluster banks go and everything is working out. So, you know, you can play solid where you're hiding the cue ball, making proper shot, shot selections, etc. But when the execution is peaking and, and every uh, execution is spot on, you know, th then you get a lot of energy. Yeah. It's sweet. <laughs> Boom. Trap. But it, you know, it, it goes back and forth. When I played the, uh, I've played the Pepina race to 21 in the States. I've played the, uh, I've played a 27-hour session once and a 16-hour <laughs> session uh, uh, for some cheese. And, uh, you know, then it goes back and forth. And and it's always, you know, an hour, 45 minutes that I'm up, up in energy, confidence. And then I make a mistake, another mistake. And then the other guy comes. It's always, it's, it's like a dogfight. So, uh, a question just about pool in in general. Uh, what do you think of of uh, we're, we're talking about getting into the zone, you know, uh, getting uh, a little bit uh, hyped and uh, hyped. Yeah, or yeah, into the zone, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do you think of, of playing at different uh, speeds? Different speeds. Yeah, like. Some players are uh, playing really fast. Some of them playing really slow, you know. And some players are uh, are gonna play faster when they when they get into the zone. I think that's the trap that goes for all players. That you start to play quicker, and the only top players are top players are more able to maintain a consistent rhythm around the table. But uh, for mortals, it's, you know, <laughs> it, it, go, it, it goes hand in hand. Zone goes hand in hand with quick at pace around the table, which will lead to mistakes. So the zone will only last for 20, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. It's not going to last longer. And people then start to make mistakes and they think they suck, blah, blah, blah. But you're not going to handle it for a longer period because it takes a lot of uh, uh, practice and mental strength to do that. And, that's, uh, and th that's, that's why I think straight pool is such a good practice because then you learn to play with a monotonous rhythm. Now, first you have to learn the game and when you learn the game, when you start to master the game, then you can make 60, 70, 80, hundreds. And it's a question of, uh, of rhythm. If you watch a straight pool tournament, as soon as a player uh, uh, has a notable shift in rhythm from one moment to the other, or slower or quicker, he's probably going to miss within 10 shots. That was just a personal question that has nothing to do with the... <laughs> With the game, but um, you know, I like to pick people's brain about that kind of stuff. So, going for the bank, Alex? Yeah, it's a free bank. Wrong speed, though. This is a cross bank for Kirsch. This bank's. They're 11 wide, it's too tough. There's no need to attack.
Now, is, now, is he, this a cross bank? He, he can bank it. He, can, he needs a lot of spin on the ball. And this is actually a nice outcome. I, I like it because he has protected the 11 with the 5 2. So this is something Rolf does not want. He has brought this ball into play. Yeah, that's what we talked about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. So now with you know, if 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 something funny happens, Kirsch can run out four balls. And all of a sudden you're under the gun. So And Kirsch is Billy the Kid. Yeah, so so what what do you have? I like I don't know. I like opening up those three balls. Maybe he can clip the two ball on the left side and coming back with the cue ball towards the, the short rail. Short rail, long rail, long rail, short rail. Oh, a clip like that thin. That thin, yeah. He's, he's going to be leaving a long cut shot on Rolf, but with a, you know, a very uh, big price card. This, this is a good shot too. Probably a better shot. If the 11 is protected. This is not a... This is not... He can... I tell you this. He can bank it uh, st straight back. One rail. Cut the 11. Because the two rail... It's... Well, it's sort of on. Yeah, if he can hit... Uh, he can hit it. <laughs> oh. No scratch. Do you think he tried what you said? Look, 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 look. It's it's very it obvious to play something from the 11, but he can run into the two, three-quarter ball hit, follow with the cue ball towards the short rail, then he's not leaving roll for bank, he's protecting the 11, and then he has the balls opened up. Okay, he made it, so that, that's a good thing. And now he still needs to do the same. The same. Clip it, or if he has the the heart to play that shot, is roll on top of the ball, stick to the two ball. I, I don't like that shot. I think I would just clip it, check the cue ball, check side, and come all the way back. Uh, too thick. The two ball got too, yeah, too much too speed. Thick. Yeah, too thick. Because the two ball got a lot of speed. He would have liked the two ball to stop on the diagonal towards uh, Rolf's pocket. Lucky. Double kiss. Rolf tried to do some. Yeah, it was double kiss. Yeah, Rolf tried to do something that wasn't there. Because, you know, Rolf is dictating this match. But if Kirsch wins this game from here, that can tilt the whole game. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That would be something. Look, that's one. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, I, you, see, you see Rolf. You know, you can always, you can almost read his mind. Position on a two is not going to happen, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, weak shot. Then he, he better could have potted it and just le leave it over there. Oh wow!
there's um, at home I bought from Tar the action report. I bought the, the uh, one pocket, the race to eleven between Efren and Shane. Because what you now saw is like a tilt from uh, Rolf, a brain fart. Um, you know, <laughs> with the mortals you'll see it more often in in one pocket. But this match between Shane and Efren, you know, even they. It happens to them as well because the race is so long, it's so intense. It was 6 2 for Efren, then 10 8 for Shane, then 10 10. And in, oh. the, in the hill hill game, they both they both make a mistake. Shane makes a mistake, Efren makes a mistake, Shane makes a mistake, like blatant errors. And finally, Efren wins. It's a tough game. It's uh, the action report, is always uh, 10k. No, 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 no. I don't know. It's just uh, no different formats to have. In this format, they played uh, one day. They played eight ball race to twenty one. I think the other day they played the uh, race to eleven one pocket. But real good stuff. So real good stuff. Also, this break from Kirsch, by the way. Yeah, a lot of balls going. Monster way. break. And Rolf is as bad as he hit it. He's lucky. Even though the 5 2 is on. Yeah, I. Hey. I'm, uh, oh, oh, oh. I'm especially curious about how the match is going to develop, seeing that uh, Rolf had, uh, really had control over this match and now. Uh, yeah, he, he could have won three nil, and now it's two one. Yeah, so you so, know, so there's a huge you, difference. What you will see now. What you will see now is that Rolf will play a little worse, and Kiers will start to play a little better. It's getting the wind in the sails. Is that a is that an English uh, expression? Wind in the sails? Is that a no? It's not an expression, but uh, it's a metaphor. <laughs> it's a metaphor for what we what we see, you know, <laughs> momentum. Yeah, you know, so it's, it's always like. Sometimes it comes h hard and it's a grind and you have to work hard and sometimes things come easy. Uh, we all like the easy ones. But it's the hard ones you remember. I don't think there's any anything on. Well, no, but you know, it's a, it's a good shot, good speed by Kirsch, and again puts Rolf in sort of a trap. I like kicking here, kicking, and even taking even taking a foul, kicking into the three seven. He's not going to leave a cut shot on the fourteen. Hard enough to push the nine out. Uh, not so hard that he risks losing the cue ball. Then he puts the nine and the six in play. They're going to be working for him. Just a kick shot. Take a fall. You see it? Then you're going to pay a ball to better your table position. Well, you heard me say it probably. We're sitting real close to the table. Oh, he played different shot. He gambled. Because that 12 ball was, you know, he couldn't control the 12. And it has worked for him. Now, here's a good shot for uh, Kiers to play, if he sees it. That 3 ball banks, banks into the stack. So he can stun the cue ball towards the upper uh, short yeah. rail and bank the 3 into the 13-9. He will be sending balls towards his pocket and the four ball is going to be real close so banking the three 
I hope for him that's what he looked at. Banking the three onto the 13. Playing the 13 8 4 towards his pocket. You know, I must say that the those shots aren't the, the things when you when you don't play one pocket a lot you see uh, it's not something obvious out of nine ball or any other game. No, of course, but but you know if one pocket is a study you have to study the game. Now just Kick, kick to come be. Well, yeah, he can pocket 14. But it's not a guaranteed shot to make. Oh. Yeah. There's maybe Rolf getting some, some power back. Thinking, maybe, hey, okay. Maybe he's trying to do too much. You know, he could kick behind the six. Sti then he's sticking behind the six. Six will be going away from Rolf's pocket a little more. Just wait. You don't have to play like a chicken. It's it's you know if you have the if you're capable of being successful in attack, then attack. But if you're continuously unsuccessful then you should adapt your strategy. Change of plans. Now this shot he should play aggressive. Spin the 12 in, open stack. If he likes the shot. Now even, he could also cut it, just play to cut it and miss the pack. Uh, why would he miss it on the right side? Or on the left side? No, on the on the right side from this uh, camera view. But it's all right. Come around to 13. Wow. Tough shot. It's funny they have this rule about the not more than four balls in the kitchen, but you know I, I've never seen it. I've never seen it here. At the TV table. This execution, this is what we talked about before, just uh, uh, a memory space, working memory, not enough brain space to, to process all the information and then execute a, a relatively simple roll shot, not uh, knowing what to do. I think that's also a thing with when you're tired or uh, don't have much energy, then a game... Uh, of, you can still play a decent game of nine ball sometimes, and uh, when you need to play eight ball or straight pool, it is uh, I, at least I find it way harder to play that kind of games when I, uh, for example, slept for a few hours. And nine ball is uh, you know you don't 
actually have to think that much with nine ball. But this, this is an whole, <laughs> a whole another level than uh, than eight ball and. Maybe it's just because you know it's it's a bit new in the Netherlands a bit. Do you know how long one pocket exists, uh, Alex? <laughs> no, no, I'm trying. I'm trying. I heard. I heard it was invented in somewhere in Oklahoma in the thirties. In the thirties, it isn't that old, but it's uh, you know, it's the main action game in the states. It is. Y <laughs> oh, you you didn't know? No. If you go in a pool room and if they're gambling on ten tables and everyone gambles, cheap or expensive, everyone gambles. Um, out of ten tables, eight tables is uh, one pocket. Really? Yeah. Wow. So we're a bit behind then in the Netherlands. Oh, different approach. So, seven on the table. Rolf is on six. And again, he should just send the balls up table. This was not such a good shot because now Kiersch can play the 14. If it's on, Let I me think see. it's on. I like either the <laughs> 14, oh. <laughs> if it's on as a bank, or hitting the eight ball, like half ball hit, cue ball tracks towards the 14, and he'll push the seven ball out a little to make it a little stronger position. But he had a shot on the 14, it's a good shot. So this means that Rolf played a bad shot. Again, again, <laughs> again. Kirsch is in a position to win this game. And it's gone. You know, because now Rolf, Rolf, he's comfortable. He's up 6-3 in ball count. But he knows that he has given an opening. He just gave an opening. Yeah, that hurts. Well... Kirsch was in a position to hurt him, but he, he missed the eight ball. Now, sent eight up table, freeze the cue ball. That's better. Yeah, on his side. Yeah. Two railer is on, or sort of a two railer. Look, 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 that's a nice shot. That's a nice shot, sir. N and now, you know, you see what is happening. Pressure's coming back to Rolf. He's still favorite. 6 4 ball count. Um, I like, I like Kirsch to play this shot just to make it. Don't play it with left spin. He is tempted. I know he's tempted to play it with left spin. Because no, all the times before he played it with left spin. Just no, to no, no. He's, he has also played with plain ball and then he was good. I say make the ball. Just make the ball. Oh, good shot. Good shot. Much better like this. <laughs> it's a good match. A lot of heat now for <laughs> Rolf. And that's the nice... Those are nice, uh, nice things to see. So he's got the 15 to make it 6-all. He has a slight angle on the, on the 15. I say force draw. Maybe he hits the 7, pushes his hit to push the 7 out. Oh, no shot. Two railer. 
two railer on the seven. So what, uh, oh, like can, like the Z bank? He thought it was on. I don't think it was. Just a, a double bank. Not yeah. easy to make, but easy to 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 park the ball in front of your hole. Take the seven out. Hit the seven, two rails into the eleven. Park the cue ball on the rail. Take those balls out. Ooh. Yeah, was a little bit of frustration. A little bit. Yeah. More like a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was not a one. You know, I played it a little bit fast. Maybe you, it was already a bit frustrated. And uh, for, no, but the frustration mounts. It mounts and it mounts <laughs> and it mounts. <laughs> and it explodes. Yeah, if, you know, or your opponent goes first. One of one of two players <laughs> goes first, <laughs> and and that's the thing. Maybe Kirsch w has been on the receiving end in the beginning of this match, but he has remained calm. That's one thing. Oh wow! I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one pocket <laughs> is a rough game. <laughs> Next to me, a man who is enjoying <laughs> to, to see the struggles and the, the fighting in the arena, in the money battle arena here at Plan B Amsterdam. Playing for one. Sorry, guys. Uh, the score is not seven five. Seven. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, seven, seven, seven five for uh, Rolf. So Kiersch is gonna make the eleven and then scratch on the seven. This match is not over. I don't know if he knows this ruling. I think he, yeah, he does. So seven comes up and he owes one. Two balls back up. And Rolf isn't out of the clear yet. So the most conservative way, if. I mean, if you're playing like a big, big, big game and you're on the hill, you need one ball, you can play, you just play to send the seven towards the one. So you would play half ball hit on the 11, sending the 11 towards the long rail, your side, and the seven is thrown offline a little towards the one. So you're, so you're gonna block two balls. Are you giving any spin? On the in your version, and he spin on the cue ball uh, to maybe yeah, to control the cue ball, yeah, a little outside spin. Uh, what is Rolf's pocket? Oh, on the on the on the left, yeah. On on the under side. Yeah. So I don't know. He he can he can he can. He shouldn't look at the one. He should not look at the one. No, th the, that's the, the, the he did that. Oh yeah. He the did. one ball needs to stay there. Yeah, that's the he, thing you he, talked about with the lead. He can clip the eleven and nestle uh, besides the seven ball. Have the cue ball seven and eleven in one line close to the short rail. If he doesn't like that, then just send the eleven up table. Get it out of play. It feels like going for the. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did it again. Not smart, or uh, not knowledgeable. <laughs> so now Kiers can 
needs to soft roll, clip the one. More oh, like this, also good. If he didn't give it enough speed, but he's lucky where the 11 ended up because now Rolf cannot play it as a bank because the, the scratch in the upper pocket is looming. Yeah, and you can't. He's on the he's on the rail, so he can hit it. Uh, withdraw. So now, just play a shot where you hide the one behind the seven or the seven behind the one. Just bank the seven towards the other side pocket. Cubal stays here to. Uh, next to the corner pocket. You understand my shot? You bank yeah, the yeah, seven yeah, toward, yeah. then you're not leaving him banks and you're sending the seven towards your side of the table. That's it. No more. This is too much. He's trying too much. He's trying to win in one inning. This is not the shot. Oh. Um. I thought it wasn't a shot. I think he, he played a real, real nice shot there. A lot of pressure now. Yes, yeah, a lot of heat now, yeah. all of a sudden. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what you learn in one pocket. Then you have to roll the ball. So execution-wise and technically, the shots aren't that hard. No, you don't but have they a are. big. But you don't have big strokes no, and stuff but, like that. But but you learn to put to play these type of strokes with quality, which you're not, you know, which nine ball players aren't used to. So, just take the seven out. Stop shot. Just take it out of play. <laughs> and we start over. And you see it now it starts again. Yeah, but but now he has uh this is this is good for uh for Rolf. The guys went to so much trouble to get that scoreboard up and we're still messing it up because we have 7-5 on the board, but it's 6-6, six, six. excuse me. Oh man, that makes us... <laughs> makes the uh, whole game, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah that... It's 2-1 to Rolf. Maybe that's why uh, he earlier played that ball into game. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Now this is, oh, he's not even tempted to kick it. But they say, kick a ball, leave a, ba a bank. That's a smart shot. Even though he didn't control the seven ball so good. The white ball is really good. Yeah, and he's showing patience. I say bank the 11 straight back. You don't, you're not going to make it. This, the 11, 11, get the 11 out. <laughs> he doesn't need to make the 11, just get it towards his pocket and out of Rolf's zone. Hey, I'm getting seriously out of stroke here, by the way. <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> so, that's how you, uh, that's how we earn extra money. People pay us to, to uh, get Alex Laley out of stroke. <laughs> that's commentary. So, this was a good shot. You see, now he puts pressure on Rolf. Distance. 
And now maybe the next shot for Kirsch will be a free bank on the seven. Oh, strong shot by Rolf. That was hard. But listen, from, a, from on the table. The bank on the seven. Why well, does it like it? Something to consider. He's eyeing up. And as you can see, seven ball is available to play. It's not tempted by that, but oh man, we're going to hill hill. So, wow, this is something. I have to say, maybe in the beginning, Rolf was obviously uh, favored with this 2 0 when he was 2 0 up, but now in this moment, you know, it's uh, so much heat coming down on him. It's really tough. Okay, back in a moment, guys.
I'm back. To let you know, I can really shake him down. Oh, wow, is this really a situation? I think. Wow. Just put it back. Rolf is a bank on the 11. But the the twelve, you know, twelve is is a threat, so he can try to play soft and check the cue ball, or come long towards the long rail and have the two and twelve double up. I don't know, Pascal, how many people uh, are viewing now, but for the ones that are, I would like to uh, advise to look out for uh, one pocket matches on YouTube where Bill in Cardona is doing the commentary. Very knowledgeable. There's a good one between Evan Reyes and Shannon Dalton. So if you Google Reyes Dalton one pocket, you have a. Uh, Billy in Cardona. I mean, think I often uh, get two of those uh, guys mixed up. You have uh, Billy in Cardona. The other one was uh, Grady Matthews. No, no, it, it, his name is a little bit alike. Not. Uh, he did a lot of commentary with uh, Jim White's as well. Oh, Thanks, man. Pascal. That's a great con contribution. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I just it, it 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 comes in a in a few moments. <laughs> Now, if I were Kirsch, I wouldn't want to break open the 3 5 1 because they are, you know, when they're touching and blocking each other, that's uh, unfavorable for uh, Rolf. Yeah, and when where he has the 8 and the 6. Did he fall? He made a fall. That's the first time in a match I see either one making an intentional, and, and that's that's not too bad. Actually, I talked about uh, intentional fouls on the on the way uh, over here to Amsterdam with Melvin, and you know, uh, sometimes I hear people say something about. Uh, uh, when you intend to, to play a, a foul, that it's a bit of anti-pull, they call it. Yeah, I don't know. 
you know i don't agree but uh some people think uh, think about that that way you know just the same as you have people who don't like it if you play a nine ball combination with nine ball or uh, or a three fouls i don't know but you know we oh like it's it's not honorable yeah, to win yeah. it that way no. <laughs> yeah you only know winning you don't know well, <laughs> i don't know uh, maybe you know maybe you can not like the rules of have a certain preference but if the rules are such then you know that's how you play i would prefer people to not use a jump cue but since these are the rules you know it's no use complaining no plus you know last time i played i played to win <laughs> yeah exactly. I, I, I didn't su i didn't succeed though but you know it was my intention <laughs> <laughs> hey, this, this, by the way, look at that shot by uh, Kirsch. I think thi this rack, I think they're both playing better. They're playing the best yet. Seeing good cue ball control. You know, good speed. When you, uh, when you, for the for the people who are just tuning in. Uh, Rolf is just uh, was two nil up, and uh, is now and now it's uh, two two. So that's uh, you know a pretty big blow when you had a few chances to close the match. And uh, but so far he's uh, he's keeping himself uh, pretty good in this in this final frame. Yeah, that so, was a great shot. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, it takes. Uh, a lot of heart to uh, to to be there again and uh, full focus. So uh, you now let's see what happens. He's looking at uh, I think he's looking at the thirty nine. I also like cutting the twelve into the one five. It's not gonna. He wouldn't be making a ball, but he would be opening up those three balls and sending some traffic towards his pocket. Cutting the 12 into the? 1-5. Oh, that's perfect. Wow. Really, if it if it pots what it, I think it does. Well, the 14 can, goes he and he will play soft draw to come into the 13. Ah, uh, he's. I think he's a little bit unlucky. Wow. So a couple of nice bank shots by Van Aas in this frame, in this game. Yeah, it's a good moment. But you know, uh, the the previous two frames, he was also, you know, uh, with a pretty decent lead. And, uh, you know, back then we, we thought he would close it in, close it out. But, you know, you know. Yeah, you just don't know. The heat can do strange things to men. And women. Mankind. Good containing shot. 
you know, he was in a, in a, in a, not in an easy spot. And at least he didn't sell out overdoing things. I like banking the three now. Banking the three into the 210. Cue ball stunning towards the short rail and nestling up against the 12. Oh, wow. That's the shot. So he's going to be moving balls towards his pocket with a chance to snooker behind the 12. Do you have to come? Uh, or play uh, excuse me, not the 12, the 13. You have to come? Sorry? The 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 thirteen like like this one. Yeah. Oh is, th is this what the people see back yeah. home? No. <laughs> I just like you were waving. Okay. <laughs> it's just so they like don't. That. So but you see the shot? Yeah. Yeah. What I wa uh, was gonna say was like you have to come pretty close to the pocket or you have to hit it with a little bit of no, inside. No, no, no. Well, this is, you know, this is easy for Rolf because he can make a move. Well, it's, he can send balls up table. What in this case you want to do? Because, you know, you have six balls. Yeah, down. You only no, need two. The 12. He needs to take out the 12. He can, I would just play the 12 towards the 7. Basta. <laughs> Straight in the face. Basta. Basta. <laughs> like this, perfect. Straight in. Basta. Yeah. This is... Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? Twelve ball in position. Whoa. Wow. That takes a scratch on the head. Yeah, this could be a time to be very aggressive for Kirsch, Kirsch. Yeah, and, and and play the bank on the seven because it it you know the the ten four is very makeable. If he swings the cue ball around two rails, you know it's possible to get the cue ball uh, on the short rail. I think from the twelve ball. Coming around to 13. It's possible. It's not easy. And it will be very likely that his next position will be as bad as this one. So And, and, and the straight back on the 7 is makeable. Do or die. Because probably he's going to leave a shot if he, got, if he would take on the 7. And now he's left the shot as well, I think. Let's we'll see. Oh, not one away, one away to the. <laughs> the, the was, uh, 
Was he waving back? Was, uh, okay, Rolf, Rolf needs the 13. 13 for the win. For the win. And he, he played, you know, he played a good rack to win it. He was all right going up 2 0. He imploded in the third and fourth rack. But he regained composure, forced Ooh. his way through with a couple of nice bank shots. Well played. Well played. Yeah, he's happy. He's happy. So, there he is, the big winner. Congratulations, Rolf. Well done. So, thanks a lot, guys. See you in the next match. Bye.